First of all, I want to take this moment to appreciate all of y'all. All three of y'all. All three of y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say it no more. For clicking on this video. You could have clicked on anything on YouTube, but you click on my video. My little, my little video. I appreciate you. Second of all, I want to remind you to cook your own food and stop eating out. Save some money. Now, the topic of marijuana addiction is surprisingly pretty polarizing. To this day, to this day, to this day, to this day, to this day. <laughs> People argue about whether or not marijuana is really considered an addiction or you can be addicted to it. Now, the definition of an addiction, if you don't know already, let me clarify that for all of y'all. A compulsive psychological need for a substance or behavior which has harmful physical or social effects on their body or their livelihood and which typically causes symptoms of withdrawal upon abstinence. Whatever you have stopped doing and you're experiencing insomnia, you're experiencing lack of appetite, you're experiencing a severe level of discomfort is an addiction. Now, it may not be as severe as another addiction, but that does not disqualify said person's experience with that substance. No, 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 no. Now, if you're new to the channel, <laughs> you may have seen, now it, <laughs> Three weeks later, many months later. So much later that the old narrator got tired of waiting and they had to hire a new- Now, if you're familiar with my channel, you may have seen that I started talking about nofap or pornography addiction. Even that, people still consider porn not to be really addictive. I'm sure it, that notion is starting, starting to wear, wear off. But, especially early on, people heavily downplayed the potential negatives of watching too much porn. And likewise, this is one of the reasons why I transitioned into weed addiction, because I found that there was no real channel, there was nobody really talking about the negative consequences of smoking too much weed. Like, no fat community is pretty strong. I'm grateful for, grateful for that. But I wanted a platform to give people who smoke weed, or who want to create weed, who, or people who want to share the, the benefits and the potential negatives of weed, a platform to talk about and to leave a comment, right? If you go through my channel, go through my weed-related videos, you'll see time and time again, people are constantly leaving comments about their weed habit and how maybe it's not destroying their life like maybe other substances, but it's hindering their progress in other areas of life, making more money, being healthier, stuff like that. And this assumption that weed is not addictive is dangerous given the increase in THC levels and overall potency of marijuana nowadays compared to previous years or, pre or previous time periods. Now, if you compare the potency of pot at just 3.8% in the 1990s, the National Institute of Drug Abuse now estimates that the THC levels in 2014, it might, might be even more than that now, or, but the same, is almost 12.2%. So there's an increase in the overall potency and toxicity, potential potential toxicity of THC in marijuana compared to 1990s, almost a 10% increase. So the key thing that determines whether or not you can be addicted to it or whether or not you feel addicted to it is three major things. What age did you start smoking weed? How often do you smoke weed? Is it daily? Is it weekly? Is it bi-weekly? Is it multiple, multiple times in a day? and how many years have you been smoking? The first two aspects have the greatest impact as to whether or not you will experience marijuana addiction upon you trying to quit. If you didn't start smoking young and you don't smoke often, pretty much every day or the majority of the week, you cannot tell someone that they are not addicted to it. You don't. You have not walked a mile in their shoes. You have not done the amount of weed they have done. <clears throat> you may not, may not have even smoked the potency a weed that they have smoked or eaten for that matter, right? So telling someone else that they are not addicted, that's out of pocket. Fuck you and your badass attitude, all your negativity and all that other shit. Keep that shit to your fucking self. Hey, you know on this side, we're fucking positive. Also, just a quick side note. It is imperative that if you are trying a new strain of weed for the first time, or you're trying weed in general for the first time, that um, you yourself know that you should have black pepper or lemon on hand. These two things have an entourage effect, which essentially counteract the 
potency of the THC that you're currently smoking or eating, right? So if you're smoking a new strain for the first time, or you have someone around you who's just smoking weed for the first time, ensure that you have these two things on hand so that in the event that they smoke too much and they start experiencing paranoia or anxiety, that you can give them the black pepper or lemon to sniff or bite into the, the lemon and it will help them reduce some of their anxiety because it essentially makes you present into the taste of the lemon, the bitter taste and the smell of it, right? Those two things. So THC and mar marijuana in general is more potent now than ever, but is it in itself addictive? Well, the answer is it is a case by case situation. It's pretty simple. It is do you have a physical and psychological compulsion to smoke weed? You can't go to work without first getting high. You can't come home without getting high. You always ask yourself, I can't do X, Y, Z without smoking weed. And that is in itself is what you have to ask yourself to determine whether or not you are being overly dependent on weed. Like in a given week, how often do you smoke? Just a quick test. I usually say 30 days, but a quick test to whether or not you are, are experiencing or are leading towards a dependency and ultimately an addiction on marijuana is to go a week. I usually say 30 days if you, want to, if you want the full detox experience, but if you can't even go a week without marijuana, fam, bruv, bruv, bruv I don't know what to tell you. That <laughs> shit is hard, Asia. hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come <laughs> on, man. Also, if you aren't able to resist smoking weed, regardless of the negative consequences you're currently experiencing, you're probably addicted, right? Maybe you're spending too much money on it. You wanna start saving money. You wanna start knowing how to make more money, but you can't do those things because you're constantly spending that money and time getting high. Or you have a lack of motivation to go to the gym or be active, right? You don't even, even with the whole, the whole pandemic going on right now, you only have the motivation to at least do bodyweight workouts or go for a 30 minute walk or something just to keep yourself active. You'd rather just be a couch potato. Hey, let's go. Hold on a second. It's going to be late. Let me finish this. And again, the majority of people that smoke marijuana daily won't have anything negative per se to say about marijuana's effect on their life. Because the percentage is that only about 9% of daily marijuana smokers become addicted to it. But that also does increase to about 17% if we started smoking young. So when it comes down to it, do you obsess over obtaining weed? Do you have constant cravings for weed, for smoking weed or consuming weed? And do you have anxiety for not having weed or having enough of it around? And are you constantly irritable whenever you haven't smoked weed? These are the questions you need to ask yourself. I can't answer that question for yourself. Nobody else can tell you whether or not you're addicted or whether you, yeah, <laughs> nobody can tell you whether or not you are addicted. It is a case by case situation, right? Like the same thing with pornography. If you're watching, for me personally, <laughs> I can say that it didn't serve me because I ended up experiencing erectile dysfunction. But for you, hey, maybe you're a better man than me, right? In terms of pornography. But essentially, what, what you have to keep in mind, right? And just in general is that whatever may negatively affect me does not negatively affect you. That's why a lot of us people in general, some people have a higher alcohol tolerance, whereas others have pretty much no tolerance. Based on your genetic makeup and the substances that you are smoking, what what age started smoking how often you smoke it all affects whether or not you become dependent and ultimately addicted to said substance now when it comes to rehab for marijuana there is a there's a constant misconception that marijuana addiction is not an authentic diagnosis some say that marijuana abuse or marijuana addiction doesn't reach the standard of a real drug problem but if someone has an issue with said thing and they are telling you they have an issue with said thing you can't just tell them, oh yeah, weak, yeah, weak willpower. You have, you, don't, you, you can't handle marijuana. They have an issue, and it's important to not chastise them or discriminate them. Well, not discriminate, but essentially be, belittle someone's struggle, right? People struggle with porn. Is porn <laughs> something you should be, you should belittle? We could say it's also not a real drug or real substance, but it is something people time and time again struggle with, right? People get erectile dysfunction and have a host of other mental issues that arises from watching too much porn and the whole fantasy that comes with that let alone something that you are also consuming into your body right so whether or not you consider it a soft drug or a hard drug you and only you can decide whether or not it is having a negative impact 
in your life? Positive or negative? Or is it more negative than positive? Or do the positives outweigh the negatives? I can't tell you that. But my goal is to just give you the resources to make that decision. Choice, decision, consequence. And just in case you didn't know, marijuana, ganja, <laughs> does come in as third after tobacco and alcohol for the number of individuals who regularly cons consume it. So we're asking whether or not marijuana is addictive or it can be addictive is a valid question. So if you struggle with quitting marijuana forever or for a 30 day detox or for a tolerance break or whatever your goal is, I have a couple of resources linked in the description and pinned comment for you to check out. God bless, much love, peace and joy, namaste. And always remember, always, 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 if it doesn't feed you, don't water it. And too much of any good thing is good for nothing. How y'all doing today? Hopefully you're doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. All right, fam. Deuces. I know you. Stay looking at your life and you didn't think it end like this. I know you. Stay awake trying to make the mistakes that you may feel right. I know.